Moving on to automation, this is another area where we have a lot of inspiration from the hyperscaler giants, right? So they have pioneered this movement from just automated data centers to self-driving autonomous data centers, data centers that pretty much operate themselves. And with any autonomous technology, for it to get adopted, we think it has to have three attributes. It has to be secure, safe. If there's no safety, nobody's going to do it. And we talked about security already. It has to be simple, and then we can talk about intelligence. For us, simplicity of automation begins with Calm. So Calm essentially lets you do self-service of application lifecycle management across public clouds and private clouds. We've extended it to run on uh, against uh, not just AHV, but uh, VMware ESX, against the three major public clouds. And we continue to evolve the ecosystem around Calm. And one of the integrations we have recently done is with ServiceNow. It turns out that not everything you guys do is through Prism. Sometimes you have to go out of Prism and use other tools as well, and ServiceNow is a popular one. So what we have done is essentially let you discover your Nutanix assets through ServiceNow, integrated our alerting system, so Nutanix alerts can be absorbed by ServiceNow and fully managed through their incident and events management system. And you can even create workflows, provision VMs, provision applications from within ServiceNow, no longer having to log into Calm, just being able to initiate the workflows right from there. Moving on to intelligence, this is another area where we've invested heavily in over the years. We've talked about it before. We have patented algorithms around machine intelligence especially when it applies to operations management. And such features as uh, dynamic alerts, capacity planning, what-if modeling, these are all things you've seen before. All are the direct result of the, of, of the machine learning algorithms that we've been working on for the last few years. There's a lot more happening in this field. And uh, to talk about that, please welcome Laura Giordana. Hey, Laura. Hey, How are you doing? You. Good to see you. So like Steve, Laura's also one of our early employees, but uh, she took a little bit of a different path than Steve. So she decided she wanted to take some time off, travel the world, apparently drank a lot of wine, <laughs> started a travel blog. And as you can see, she looks exactly the same as she did uh, 10 years ago. Thanks, so Steve. <laughs> draw your own conclusions from there. <laughs> what do you have for us, Laura? OK, awesome. So yeah, let's. You know, we've been talking about the past 10 years and how things have changed and systems have gotten faster, smarter, and more complicated in some cases. So automation has really become very key. So for example, with the ServiceNow integration, we're able to now discover our Nutanix clusters, and ServiceNow can discover that using our APIs, Nutanix APIs. So for example, on the ServiceNow dashboard here, I have a, a Nutanix dashboard, and this is actually showing me my environments uh, as you, you know, might see them in Prism. So it shows me I'm managing two Nutanix clusters. We have seven hosts, eight storage containers. We have a, some charts related to the storage distribution and the VMs themselves. So we're getting VM information directly into ServiceNow. And then talking about incidents and events with, uh, with the alerts, if we dig into the incidents, we can actually see we have a variety of incidents here. And we can actually see the alert that goes along with this. So for this particular incident, we have a critical alert uh, on our King's Landing cluster. So it seems like King's Landing is having a lot of problems today. Looks like a lot of incidents. Over there. <laughs> and these are also tied to events. So if I come over to the event screen, we can see there's actually multiple critical and warning events on our King's Landing cluster. So as an admin, I'd be a little concerned at this point. And so I have a second cluster that we're running developer environments on this King's Landing cluster. So we want to actually, as an admin, I'm just going to go ahead and spin up some additional workstations and environments on my Iron Islands cluster. And so normally, I would do that through Calm. I have a blueprint that we can actually do this really quickly. But now with, our Calm, with the Calm integration within ServiceNow, I can actually see all the integration points. So we have our blueprints, and, and we can also order blueprints and provision applications through the catalog itself. So these become catalog items within ServiceNow. So if I click on my, uh, my blueprint here and click Launch, what this will do, this will go ahead and generate a service request once I, once I order the application. So let's go ahead and call it 
click order now. And typically, you know, you'd have some sort of approval workflow in place. So this becomes a service request within ServiceNow. And as an admin or whoever is responsible for approving the, the request, they'd come in here and they would mark it approved and then click on update. And this will go ahead and kick off the provisioning on the Prism Central side all through ServiceNow. So if I jump over to my King's, uh, King's Landing cluster here, or Iron Islands cluster, sorry, this is the one I'm going to be provisioning the new workloads on. We can take a look at that blueprint that we're actually provisioning. So I'll jump into Calm, and we'll look at the blueprints. So our blueprint here actually builds out a full developer environment with a fully functioning CI CD pipeline. So it's also building a carbon cluster. So we have a variety of services here. We have our carbon AHV service, and that's actually building the carbon cluster. And we have a variety of other different uh, services related to the CI CD pipeline. So you can configure this to spin up a certain number of developer workstations or, or Jenkins slaves. And we have a private Docker registry, and the whole thing is, is, is there containing this application. And you can provision it with Calm in just you know, 20 to 30 minutes, which is a lot faster than it would be if you had to do this all manually. So this blueprint also shows that Calm supports both containers and VMs in the same yep. workload, so real hybrid application. Exactly. So at that point, our, um, once the, the request goes through, and is submitted, it'll start spinning up here as an application. If I just refresh it here, there we go. So it's now provisioning, and we see that I did that all from ServiceNow, and I didn't have to do that from Prism. So that really shows that integration. So now I'm looking at this alert here. I'm spinning up new environments, so I want to make sure my cluster is in a healthy state. So I'm going to drill down into this alert, and now we can see I have a SQL Server query latency. So I'm running an ERA database, a SQL Server database, and I'm actually getting this alert that the latency is high. And I, I want to handle this right before yeah. while I'm spinning up new environments. Well, that's interesting, though. It's a SQL Server latency is high, and this is Prism. So normally, we were only doing infrastructure level uh, alerts like CPU and memory. But now you've added in support for application level metrics as well. Yep. Yeah, so it's beyond infrastructure. It's actually giving us uh, application-aware metrics. So we're leveraging some application-aware sensors. In this case, we're using Blue Medora uh, to actually get these metrics. So we're getting information um, not only about the CPU and memory, but about the cache hit ratio and the, the latency of the queries, et cetera. So to remediate this, you know, as an admin, I'm just going to throw more memory at it. So I could do this manually, or I could do this with a cross-play playbook. And so Crossplay allows us to do is it allows us to configure playbooks where we can perform automated operations using intelligence. So when we see a particular alert, we can run a playbook that can you know, shut down the VM or take a snapshot or, or add more memory in this case. And it can do a, a variety of operations. So like IFTTT, simple way to create action chains in response to events and alerts and so on. Yep, exactly. So we can do the, the memory add, and we can also integrate with third-party APIs. And we have a Slack integration as well. So for this particular playbook, uh, it's going to add memory to the VM. And it's also going to send me a Slack notification. Now, here I did this manually. But you could always, of course, set it to run automatically. So as an admin, you, when, this alert, you know, when the system detects the alert, It'll automatically increase the memory and then send you a Slack notification when that memory uh, has been added. So if we jump into my Slack here, we can actually see that it's showing us at the bottom. I don't know if you can read that, but that it just sent me a message that the database was increased. And so meanwhile, I've also gotten some alerts about uh, Nutanix Insights. So Nutanix Insights has sent me some information pertaining to my clusters. So Nutanix Insights is our new offering of taking a feed from your data centers to the Nutanix Support Cloud, doing analytics on that, and presenting that back to you in terms of health information, best knowledge base articles, best practices, things like that that you can act on. Right. So we're yeah. taking the power of the local intelligence that you have with uh, XPlay and uh, sensors and combining it with the power of the Nutanix Support Cloud. Yes, exactly. So it's, it's basically our predictive health and support automation uh, for, for the Nutanix Cloud. And if I log in here uh, from the email that I, that I got, 
we can see a variety of discoveries were, were discovered by Insights across all of my clusters, not just Iron Islands and King's Landing. I have some other alerts here as well. And so, for example, on the King's Landing cluster, we can see that it's actually detected high node temperatures. And that's, this could be why, you know, maybe well, there was a dragon blowing oh, fire at it. Right, so it, right. that sounds pretty accurate. <laughs> uh, so it shows, it, it essentially shows a timeline of the temperature rising. And at a certain point, it created a case. Pretty slow burning dragon fire. <laughs> <laughs> the slow burning fire, yeah. Uh, and and uh, what well, was sent 30 minutes ago. So uh, it collected hardware diagnostics for us and auto-created a case on our behalf. So, and it also gives us, of course, recommendations. It's actually telling us the node fan seems healthy, so it's able to detect. You know, it's checking the kind of normal things you would check. And then it tells us it's probably rising due to external conditions. If we look at our island, Iron Islands cluster that I'm you know, also spinning up workstations on, we can see that this one in particular has a storage capacity issue that could become an issue, so we could lose RF2 resiliency. So for this particular discovery, it hasn't yet opened a case. It hasn't gotten that serious yet, but it's giving us uh, recommendations, uh, options. So here it's telling us dedupe is not enabled, compression may not be enabled, and also links us directly to a KB where we can go and see if these operations would be beneficial for our workloads. And so that would bring up the KV, <laughs> the live demo. So, <laughs> <laughs> all right. Okay. Great. Thanks, Laura. Thanks for uh, showing us all that. Thanks, Rajiv. <clears throat>